Hello and welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. Throughout this week in the Parliament and in the Senate Estimates Committee process, the opposition's been pursuing the case of an Egyptian asylum seeker convicted in Egypt in his absence of terrorism charges, including murder. He arrived in Australia last year and until April this year was held in a low security detention centre. The opposition's been pressing the government on who knew what when. The Immigration Minister went into Parliament today to correct an answer he'd given yesterday when he said neither he nor his predecessor Chris Bowen were told of the matter before this April. Today he said Mr Bowen's office was informed last September. All this on a day when the government got news the economy is growing and its education reforms passed the lower house. There were more signs too that discipline in the Labor Party is at the very least fraying a little at the edges. Joining me this evening is Labor MP Sid Sidebottom and Liberal MP Russell Broadbent. Welcome to you both. Thank you. We'll go first to the case of the Egyptian man and the inquiry ordered by the Prime Minister. Today I have directed the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security to examine the management of Australian government agencies of persons seeking asylum uh, who present complex security issues, particularly this case. Sid, do you call for an investigation if nothing's gone wrong? Um, well, I'm not privy to all the information, unlike most of the people in Australia. Uh, all I know is national security is a very, very important issue. Uh, I don't care who's in charge of the country. Uh, national security should not be used uh, for political point scoring or as a political football. I think it's reached a stage where if the public appear to be concerned, then what the Prime Minister has done is to do the right thing, and that has, that is, have it investigated in the processes by those people who are qualified to do that. Russell, the opposition's been pursuing this matter. Are you confident, though, we know everything we need to know about this man, the circumstances of his conviction in Egypt? Well, I think the outcome has been that we now have an inquiry. I think the opposition has been pursuing the government to get inquiry so we can get to the bottom of it. That's the important part, and that's been achieved. But the man has been, as the Prime Minister pointed out, he has been in detention all of this time, may have been in a low-security facility, but he has remained in detention. Do you think that really raises uh, what the opposition have called serious questions about national security? Well, it raises serious questions about who was told, when they were told, um, how serious is this issue, what was, his, uh, what was the background of the whole issue, what happened in Egypt, what is the veracity of all of this, and I think the opposition just wants to know on behalf of the Australian people exactly where we stand on, in this particular case. Ted, doesn't that seem fair enough? There are, uh, we know now that the former immigration, officers, former immigration minister's office were told by the Immigration Department about this case in September. It is not clear that the minister, the then minister himself knew, but the current Immigration Minister didn't find out until April. Well, again, uh, an inquiry will determine this. And you, you raised a really interesting thing, and, and Russell made comment on the veracity uh, of the uh, charges and claims on this particular person. Uh, I'm not qualified to make those statements, and I do question uh, the, the use of this uh, as an issue at a time uh, when the government uh, is seeking to, one, table very, very important legislation affecting this whole nation, and, and also good news with the economy as well. So I, I just question it. But, you know, um, when we're dealing with national security, if it's going to be belted around like a football, then let those that are responsible and those that are qualified to look into this and give us some answers so that we can stop this playing with national security. We might move on now to those two issues you mentioned, the two bright spots for the government, when news the economy is growing at 2.5% for the year, and the education bill, which details the so-called Gonski reforms, was passed by the House of Representatives. The minister responsible for the education reforms called it a genuinely historic day. Every dollar in education that any government spends under this framework on the legislation that passed through this House today is directed at the needs, the individual needs of students in schools, government and non-government. And that is a powerful, transforming reform and a great improvement to the way in which we fund schools now and the way that the Leader of the Opposition is still committed to. 
Uh, Russell, there have been some states saying they haven't got enough information on the education reforms from the federal government. The details are now in legislation which has been passed by the House of Representatives. Should states now categorically say whether they will sign up or they won't? No, not until they get the full information. You say that, that there's, there's, was there 71 amendments or something like that? They've got to go through each of those, find out where they'll be. My, look, Sid's a former school teacher. Uh, I've got to say to you both tonight and to the Australian public, there's a whole generation of kids are going to go through our secondary colleges before one dollar arrives in their pocket. That's what's going to happen. And there is confusion as to uh, the different sectors of education as to how much money they're going to get and when they're going to get it and will it be indexed. And there's some big pressures being put on by the government today to enter right into the management of those schools and delivery of those funds. Although New so, South Wales, which has a coalition government, seems to be perfectly happy with the arrangement. Well, there's been some deal done with the New South Wales government, which Sid said before he didn't know about different things. I have no idea what the deal is with the New South Wales government. But have they been given some other incentives? I don't know, but it was obviously good for Barry O'Farrell and, and he saw it as good for New South Wales that they were going to get a benefit. So I don't know what deal was done. But there are real concerns, um, especially from uh, Catholic schools, as to what intervention th there's going to be in their school management and processes. Sid, if the Minister believes this is an historic reform, why was the Parliament only given effectively a day to have a look at it? Well, I, I think the, the principles... 90 minutes. And, uh, Russell, um, I think the principles and the intent of the legislation uh, has indeed been uh, in this parliament for some time. The New South Wales uh, government has signed off on this historic uh, agreement. Uh, the ACT um, government has signed off on that. Tasmania will be close to signing off on it as well. But it has not yet signed uh, no, off. No, and, and, and it, this is a federation and this is a negotiation process that takes place. So they've got to be clear that it also uh, fits their intentions and also uh, their financial parameters, etc. So the, the, the framework is there, uh, the intention is there, um, the, the, the basis of it is an education funding model based on needs. We don't disagree with, surely we could not. And loadings on top of that where no one will be worse off and those that need it will be better off. And we have to change the funding model. And if anyone disagrees with that, I re it just defies uh, my, my understanding. Russell, at the heart of this reform is that model that Sid talked about, that, that students are funded on the basis of their need. Is there anything to disagree with that principle? Not in that principle or the processes that, that have been outlined. However, there is real concern for me over... Uh, but nobody, nobody wants money put into secondary schools especially across the sector more than I do. I believe that we have to invest in this generation of people. It's very, very important for the nation into the future. So if we're really talking about the future, if we want the best, we've got to invest in education. It's crucial. Now, whether this is the right way to go about it, um, I, there are some questions. Now, Gonski has been put out there to everybody it means more money for us, more money for education. Simple as that. And I think the Australian people are saying, yes, that's a good idea, but governments have to actually look very closely at how they spend your money. Well, could, could I just add there, it isn't just about a pile of money, it's about giving certitude into the future for resourcing schools, and it also has uh, criteria established with it about how we run our schools, what, what expectations we have, flexibility and autonomy, uh, and they just some I of these think less things. flexibility well, and less autonomy no, for no, schools no, and that's principals, nonsense. especially in the Catholic sector. You know um, that's right. We, <laughs> we might move on now to some of the atmospherics of the day. After yesterday's call from a supporter of the Prime Minister for her to get out and engage with the electorate on asylum on the asylum issue, another Labor member, Sen Senator Doug Cameron, a Rudd supporter, also called on her to ditch the spin. Mr Rudd himself made a rare appearance at the morning doorstop. I think it's time everyone, and I mean everyone, just pulled their heads in and got on with the business of ensuring that Tony Abbott does not become the next Prime Minister of the country. Sid, Mr Rudd gets attention whenever he speaks. Uh, he and others have been blamed for destabilising the party. What do you think of him calling on others to pull their heads in? Um, I can just listen to what he says. And, uh, and indeed, what he's asking people to do 
um, I suggest they do. We saw we might have a look at some vision now. Joel Fitzgibbon, who made some comments about spin yesterday, was pursued around what's called the mural hall in Parliament House today. I think a cameraman at one stage fell into a pot plant. Uh, is, is, is there a sense in the Labor Party that you are headed for a loss in September and that people are starting to pre prepare for the post-election period? Oh, well, I can only account for myself. Um, and, and people are concerned uh, about the future. Um, they're very concerned that Tony Abbott could well be the Prime Minister. I think uh, Kevin Rudd reiterated that again. Um, so I can only worry about what I do. Uh, many, many others are positive about uh, their future and the future of this government. But importantly, the Australian people will soon ask what are the policies of the opposition and the opposition leader. Now, and I hope the media pursue this in a lot more substance than they are to, a, a, at present. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what the future brings. Well, I have a question for you, Russell, already written down. Tomorrow there's 100 days to go until the next election. Is it time for the coalition to start putting out more detailed policies putting out the policy costings for the people to have a look at. Uh, in one sense, uh, if a week's a long time in politics, 100 days is a very long time, but it's actually not all that long, is it? No, it's not all that long, but I remind you that I've been around uh, for the Houston election 1993. No election is unwinnable. Mm. No election is unlosable in this country. And, and it's for the opposition to manage its campaign. I think Tony Abbott's done a terrific job as opposition leader. He would make a great prime minister, but there's a long way to go before that, that can happen. But another lesson people took from John Hewson's experience when he put out the fight back plan was to not put information out early. And it's, it's, you've seen uh, in recent elections people trying to be a small target strategy. Is that really the right way to inform the public about what you would do in government? No, I think Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey will lay out before the Australian people our program for the future benefit of the Australian nation. And I think they do have a plan, and it's a good plan. And it's a plan for the betterment, not only for education, but for the environment, uh, and for all aspects of Australian life will be laid out before the Australian people. But I can just warn everybody, no election is unlosable. And when there's such hubris around, there's a, I have great concern as to what the Australian people are deciding as against what we think up here in Canberra. A, a hubris around in your own party? Uh, I think there's, there's a, 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 the Labor Party seemed desolate and my own party, uh, I would warn them that there's a long way to go to win this election campaign. Every election campaign in Australia is a close election campaign, every one. Um, Houston lost by 2,600 votes down the eastern seaboard of Australia, and can I say I didn't enjoy it very much. <laughs> I <laughs> lost my seat at the time. <laughs> On that note, we'll have to leave it. Russell Broadbent and Sid Sidebottom, thank you very much for Thanks, your time. Thanks, yeah, Thanks. And thank you for joining Capitol Hill today. We will be back tomorrow. Until then, though, good night.